Lesson 2.1 is about properties of equality and property. Okay, I'm going to illustrate some of the properties by going through uh, solving an algebraic equation, and I'll demonstrate some of the algebraic properties that we use to do that. So first of all, um, we call whatever we start with uh, in a simple proof where we use properties the given statement. We'll do the same thing when we prove something in geometry. We start with what we're given. And in this case, 2 thirds times some variable b plus 5 equals 10 minus b. So b represents a number, and we want to solve for it. So the first thing that we would likely do is maybe we want to clear this fraction. We don't like that 3 there in the denominator. We want to get rid of the fraction. Well, in order to do that, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 3. Okay, and we have to multiply every term on both sides by 3. And when we do that, uh, we get 3 times 2 thirds b, which the 3's cancel, so that leaves a 2b, plus 3 times 5, which is 15, equals 3 times 10, which is 30, minus 3 times b. Okay, and what algebraic property did we just use there? We just used the distributive property of equality. Okay, so POE will stand for property of equality. Um, okay, next, maybe we want to get both those B terms onto the same side. So um, I'm going to add 3B to both sides to get uh, all the Bs on the left. Now, when I added the same thing to both sides, what property was I using? I was using the addition property of equality to get that step, which says as long as I add the same things to both sides of an equation, the equation remains true. So now I have um, 5b plus 15 equals 30. Okay, well now maybe I want to get the numbers all on one side. I've got b on the left and I want to get all my constants, my numbers on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. And when I do that, which property of equality from algebra am I using? Well, I'm using the subtraction property of equality, which says as long as I subtract the same thing from both sides of an equation, that the equation will remain true. So now I have 5b equals 15. And the last thing I want to do to solve for b is to divide both sides by 5 to get b, a single 1b alone. And what property did I use to do that? I used the division property of equality that we know from algebra. Uh, and so I end up with my final b equals 3. And you can plug that back into the original equation, and you'll find that that's true. So there's just an example of properties that you, from algebra that carry over into geometry um, that have to do with adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing both sides of an equation by something, but that's the same on both sides, and the equation staying true. Okay, so we use uh, the algebraic properties all the time when we're in geometry when we're trying to prove things. Um, and we also use, um, there's a couple others that we use in, uh, from algebra, and they also have applications in geometry. One of them is the reflexive property, which just seems like not even worth saying, but that's just that something is equal to itself. And uh, so in geometry, I might say angle C is congruent to itself. It doesn't seem like that would be useful now, but you'll find that that's a useful step when we get to geometric proofs. Another property is the symmetric property. In algebra, uh, I can say if A equals B, then B equals A. I can just switch the left and the right side. So same kind of thing. In geometry, I could say uh, if segment AB is congruent to segment uh, CD, then, you know, CD can be on the left, is congruent to AB. I can just switch left and right. That's symmetric property. Okay, then the last of these three is the, um, is the transitive property, and that's very useful in geometry. 
in, in our proofs. And that's the idea. It's really just a, a form of substitution. If I have the quantity A is equal to the quantity B, and then B is also equal to C, then it should follow logically that A and C must be the same. I basically used B to connect them. So if A equals B and B equals C, then A must be the same as C. And if we were looking at two figures in geometry, if angle A and angle B have the same measure, and then B has the same measures, is congruent to angle C, then it follows logically that angle A must be also congruent to angle C. Okay, so we'll just look at applying some of these properties in a real simple basic geometric proof. Um, we are given two segments, ST and RN, that we are told in total are congruent or are equal in length. Uh, I'm also told further here in red that the little segment IT here, and I'll mark that with two hatch marks, is congruent to is the same measure as that little segment RU. Now, what we're asked to prove is that this segment here, SI, is congruent to UN. Now, if the totals are congruent and the little pieces are congruent, it should make logical sense that we can subtract off the little pieces and we'll be left with SI congruent to UN. So we start off with the given statement, ST is RN. Those are the same length. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is rename ST to be SI plus IT. It's the composition of those two little segments. And I'm going to rename RN to be the sum of RU plus UN, its two little segments. Now I'm going to restate that whole first, this whole ST equals RN, the whole first statement once again using my new names. For ST I'm going to call it SI plus IT and for uh, RN I'm going to now call it RU plus UN. So what have I done? First of all, these are both we just use the segment addition postulate, which we've already learned, to say that the big pieces are made up of their smaller parts. Okay, and then we've used substitution. We've just restated our original statement that the two big, statement, uh, two big segments are the same, but we're just naming them differently. We're naming them as the sum of their two parts. So now what we got to do, we want to just get to the SI is equal to UN. We want to get to that this piece is equal to this piece. So algebraically now we can see that IT and RU are the same. So again, this was a given, IT equals RU. And I'm actually just going to subtract that from both sides. Those are two equal parts and I'm subtracting the same thing from both sides. IT and RU represent the same length, and I'm going to subtract that length from the left and from the right side, and then I will be left with SI is equal to UN. And what I've used right there is the subtraction property of equality to get down to prove that those two little pieces are congruent. And that's kind of a basic introduction to using the algebraic properties of equality and the geometric properties of congruence to start looking at the process of proof.